What up, Jet Team? It's Ryan. Welcome back to the channel. If you have been here before, I'm a former F-15 e combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and commercial pilot. Today, we're going to be breaking down Maverick using split throttles in the F-14. Today, he's going to be fighting against an F-18 instead of a Su-57. But I'll give you my thoughts at the very end of this video on what I saw with split throttles and differential throttles in dogfights with the F-15E. And ultimately, if I think it would have actually worked out for Maverick, we're going to be watching Growling Sidewinder's video of this, of the dogfight. So if you haven't followed him, go ahead and pop over there and give him a follow. Before we get going, if you would, just dominate that like button, maybe even subscribe every time you like and subscribe maverick smiles wherever he is in the world <laughs> here we go so here we go guys coming into the merge we've got maverick making it happen being an athlete so there is that merge with the F-18 and the split throttles, we'll see when he plugs in the split throttle. I mean, ultimately, there's a lot of thoughts that I have on this. Do I think it's a going out the door game plan? No, it's kind of an, oh, like this is different moment and now I'm gonna use split differential throttle. So it can help you roll. So if you, can t if you start to roll one direction, like here, I'd have a right afterburner in, left, out, trying to help me roll there. Now, there's lots of different things that can happen. And the key thing, guys, is you're giving up thrust. Now, it just depends if that extra degree or two or whatever of maneuverability, yep, that's a good job with that right afterburner cooking. Yeah, obviously, if you're trying to turn left, you'd want the right one cooking. If you're trying to turn right, you'd want the left one cooking to kind of push you over more. But as you saw there, there's some wing rock happening, right? So the F-14 flight control system is kind of like, uh, like we've got one engine in, the thrust isn't up where we want it. Now, is it worth it? Again, if you have a, a nice gunshot that you just need a couple extra degrees on, potentially. So that F-18 just flew through the HUD of the F-14 and he got a gunshot off. Now, one of the things we would always say is there are no free trips through my HUD. So if you try to fly through my HUD, nothing's gonna be free, baby. You're gonna get some rounds thrown at you. So I love that Maverick went ahead and made that happen. There it is, right there. Again, don't think you're gonna get a free flight through anyone's HUD. If you're gonna go through someone's HUD, get out of plane. It's because at the end of the day, they're gonna put some rounds downrange coming right at your forehead. So <laughs> you wanna make sure you're out of plane and that comes back to what you've heard me say before, being in the other cockpit. Put yourself in the shoes of the other pilot. They know this might be their one chance to get some rounds off. Did the differential thrust help there? I bet it potentially did to an extent, but again, is it worth the cost of less thrust? Stay to the end, because I'll give you some things that I saw happening in the F-15E from some of the most experienced Strike Eagle pilots, and I have some theories. I have some thoughts on what they were doing. All right, here we go. Into the merge, looks like a one circle fight. And the F-14's wings are swept back. That's on auto mode those wings are gonna automatically adapt to whatever Mach number the F-14's flying as far as whether they're gonna go forward or back. So I see an F-14 come at the merge like that, I know they're going pretty fast. So I'm thinking they're probably gonna go vertical. That's what I would be thinking, but ultimately that was more of a horizontal fight. And there we go, nice shot coming from the F-18 there. Probably some differential thrust coming soon. Nope, he's got both motors plugged in, which I like, especially if you're going uphill. There we go, there's the differential thrust because he's trying to get it to help him roll. So he's trying to get some assistance on the roll. Man, I think if you're, if you're still relatively fast, your ailerons are gonna work. But if you are slow, the ailerons aren't gonna have a lot of functionality at slow speeds. So yeah, some differential thrust and rudder is more of what you wanna think about at low speeds. Nice, F-14's in the control zone here. Get it, Maverick. And of note, this is an F-14A, so the engines on it aren't quite as advanced. The F-14B, they got updated engines. What you would be thinking of here, and this was actually a factor in the Strike Eagle as well, sometimes in certain flight regimes, is getting a compressor stall in the engine if you're going from idle to AB extremely rapidly. So you gotta be really careful here. You gotta be very ginger, is what we would say. Treat it like it is fragile and make sure that it's not gonna compressor stall on you. 
All right, here we go. Okay. Yep. Dang, this is a tight rolling scissors. So yeah, this is a great representation of rolling scissors. And there you go. Fight through the HUD, you're gonna get some rounds sent down range at you. That's just the cost of flying through your HUD. Don't ever let anybody do it for free. Nice, I like the F-14 preserving range above, using some differential throttle there, probably using the left AB for a second to help with that roll. All right, let's make this happen. Oh, okay, nice reversal by the F-18 making the F-14 extremely defensive here. Dang, that was a nice move. Again, I think the differential throttle thing can get you into trouble because it help, it's gonna make you lose energy. I'd rather have the energy any day of the week and then just use rudder to move my nose into position. Oof. Oh, dude. Midair collision. All right, so he hits him and then it's gonna be a midair. And again, you've heard me say this in other videos. Get away from the fireball. Take your shot, ease off, get some separation and distance from that fireball. Let's watch this here. So super tight scissors. Again, you gotta be careful. Boom, get that shot and then, he's just so tight. Taking that shot is so tight, but man, that's the risk you run by you know, essentially getting target fixation. And that's something that can happen, especially in the air to ground regime when you're looking at a target on the ground. Lots of pilots have done that where they just continually stare at the target even after they shoot and Obviously, it can turn out extremely bad like it did there. So shoot, ease off, get away from the fireball. And oh, by the way, 100 mile radius, people are gonna see that fireball and they're gonna be like, hmm, wonder if I should go and get involved in that fight. So the fireball explodes, think, ease off, get away from it as fast as you can. Otherwise, you run that risk. All right, Maverick, let's see these split throttles again, brother. What you got? What you got? All right, there's the merge with the F-18. Uh, looks like a horizontal fight happening. And again, the, the uh, F-14 is a little slower. Uh, if I said F-14 merge, I meant F-14 merging with an F-18. So if the wings are extended like that, if they're forward, you know that F-14 is a little bit slower and they're probably going for a one circle fight. If they're swept back, I'd be thinking it's gonna go vertical, potentially trying to get me into a rate fight, a two circle fight. So again, it's about seeing cues, small little details on the jets. Now, probably trying to use some differential uh, throttle there, some right AB, now back into the left AB, potentially. Again, I'm gonna want thrusties here all day, baby. I'm gonna wanna go up and get my energy up and create this separation here. This is nice. This is actually really nice. Getting that turning room above the bandit, and then you just put that bandit in the shoot me, kill me zone. All day, yep. And then if I started going downhill, I would probably pop it out of AB right there just to preserve some of that distance between myself and the bandit. Now, let's see if you can get a gunshot, perfect guns opportunity here. Oh, dude, nice. That's flying close to that fireball though again. So that was close from the F-14 there, getting target fixation. You gotta be really careful. Get away from the fireball. Nice shot. Yeah, he barely gets away before having a mid-air collision. So something you gotta think about. You know, it's, it's kind of one of those things like, after you shoot the bandit, the fight's not over until you're clear of the fireball and ready for your next engagement. And that's what we would always do. So we'd practice, okay, we got this kill. Now we're going back to a scan. Eyes outside, if you got a Wizzo, Wizzo's got the radar running. We had a radar mode called guns, which is a great scan mode to try to pick up anything really close to you that was trying to jump you. So again, it's like rapid fire. It's like fireball happens, next fight. You know, fireball happens, next fight. And then you're checking gas. Where's my wingman? What's my weapons load? No big deal. No big deal for you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Looks like a little bit of a vertical. I like going vertical. I would probably be doing that all day, especially with this much energy. You could tell F-14's wings are swept back. It's gonna go vertical. The F-18 loves the one circle. So probably smaller turn radius happening from that. But, but the F-14 does a good job of jamming the WES there. So real nice. So this might develop into like a wide scissors. I love vertical BFM. To me, it's where you really make your money as a fighter pilot, getting good at the vertical stuff. And it's kind of like a step progression. You do like some of the horizontal stuff and then you just take the horizontal stuff and you just flip it. And it's a lot of the same principles apply. So energy management, energy, energy, energy. And you can see this F-14 
is probably gonna fall off first. Yep, F18 falls off first. Didn't come to the merge with as much energy because most likely they're looking for that one circle fight. So they wanna, they're trying to be at cornering velocity, which is probably somewhere around, I don't know, 380 to 400 knots for a Hornet. Whereas I think that F8, that F14 went into that merge probably at 500 plus bills. So they're gonna get more vertical. Now the F18, I'm surprised they didn't get a shot off there though. Because typically if you have a jet go really high into the vertical like that, you're gonna have an opportunity to get a Fox 2 off. There's that differential throttle again, helping with that roll. I, you know, I buy it, it's gonna help a little bit. Rudder is gonna be your biggest thing though. If you don't have thrust vectoring, your rudder is gonna be the biggest thing to get you to get that nose on and then, you know, couple extra degrees that might be all you need, especially with an F-14 that has those engines spaced apart relatively far, further than a Strike Eagle. So nice shot and kill on the F-18. F-14's cleaning up, man. I mean, this might change my mind about differential throttles. Uh, but again, I'm gonna tell you a story at the end of what I think was happening with some of the senior instructors in the F-15E. And I assume, I don't know, that it was happening in the F-14 as well. So guys, you made it to the very end of the video, so now you get the bonus story. And this one is things that I saw as I was rising through the ranks as a Strike Eagle pilot. A lot of the senior instructors, some of the best fighter pilots I ever flew with. One of them, name was Plague. That was his call sign, Plague, if you're watching, cheers. I will say, I think there were some things that were going on as I'm watching. You know, at the end, we, we would do the instructional part. So, I would go through my different paces, whether I was practicing to be an instructor or whether I was getting instructed from Plague in this case, I would see some things that I've never seen a Strike Eagle do. And a lot of it happened up in the vertical where that Strike Eagle would essentially, I would run out of energy and Plague and his Strike Eagle, it would just pretty much just rotate almost like what you would see like an F-22 do. So if he was using differential throttle, he didn't tell me, I think he was just like a master at energy management and who knows, he might have in this scenario right here, like let's say we're both going up, I run out of energy and he wants to put his nose on me as fast as he can, plug in, in this case, if you're in my perspective, plug in that right afterburner and full left rudder to just slingshot that jet around to get the nose on and get a shot off. I saw things like that from the advanced instructors, but here's why I don't think they teach it. Because what I notice in a dogfight is, especially when you're you know, learning the jet, you're figuring it all out, you've got this aircraft in front of you, you're maintaining closure, making sure you're not gonna hit each other, and then you're going through the different progressions of the weapons systems. And that was probably the most complex thing, guys. Because at the end of the day, a fighter jet is a massive sensor and it's a massive truck for weapons. That's what it is. The flying part needs to essentially become second nature and you need to be able to use those weapons and step through them extremely fast. Now, doing that you know, in fractions of a second comes with a lot of practice and it takes a long time to get really good. I remember when I was like, probably you know, a captain for two years or so, all the way through the time I became like a young major, that's when I felt like I was in the sweet spot. I was really threading the needle of being able to operate that jet effectively, step through the different weapon systems, and essentially handle weird scenarios that were thrown at me. But it took that long for things to kind of slow down on the radar scope, at least in my mind. You know, obviously they're moving at the exact same speed as day one, but it takes you so long to get really good at that fighter jet. So what I think is, if they would have thrown in the differential throttle thing as well, Man, that you can't do that early on because you're so focused on getting good at the weapon systems, again, maintaining your closure so you don't fly in front of the other jet and fly through their HUD, right? And then you get that non-free flight through their HUD and they turn the gun on and you're done. You gotta focus on the building blocks and the basics. But the advanced instructors, I think it was like, I would relate it to the advanced instructor mafia. They had some secrets, they had some tips, they had some tricks that they were not sharing with the younger guys because at the end of the day, they needed to make sure the young bucks knew that the old bucks could put them in their place. And they certainly did. So to play uh, for gutting me multiple times, man, well played, sir, uh, but who knows? You know, Everybody has a bad day, so next time, if I have an opportunity to dogfight plague, I'm gonna try some of this thrust vectoring stuff and see what happens. <laughs> Do you imagine? That'd be epic. Just get a dogfight going just to try out the thrust vectoring stuff. I would love to. If you would like to see that, comment below. If you would like 
to see it. Thanks so much for being here, guys, on this rendition of the Top Gun 2 Maverick Split Throttles. If you have other ideas for topics, why not? Shoot them my way on Instagram. I read all the messages on Instagram and on YouTube. I can't always respond to all of them, but I do read them. So I thank you guys very much for liking, commenting, subscribing, all that stuff. And before you go, please go ahead and just download that like button, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, a young buck fighter pilot beats an old buck fighter pilot. <laughs> Thanks for being here, guys. It really means a lot. We'll see you in the next video. Most of all, have a great day.